Playtime! Yay! Welcome to Playtime, where we celebrate imagination, play together, and maybe learn something we didn't know. I'm MIB, and this is Microman. It's not a toy of Microman, mind you. This is the actual Microman. Let's back up. Microman is a toy line created by Takara, and it was active from 1974 to 1984, and then again from 1998 to 2007. This line consists of three and a quarter inch action figures with some decent articulation relative to their size. And real quick aside, if you're looking at this and saying, that's not a Microman, that's a Micronaut, then I should tell you that one, Microman was licensed and distributed in the US by Mego under the name Micronauts from 1976 to 1980. And two, you are old. Microman has an incredibly interesting place in toy history, and I'm not gonna dive into it all today. Suffice to say that there's a really fascinating timeline of events showing how Microman comes from G.I. Joe and then led to the Transformers as we know them today. As a matter of fact, Megatron and some other notable Transformers originated from a Microman toy line called Microchange. It's why he turns into a handheld gun instead of a giant vehicle like Optimus Prime. Again, it's very interesting. In the narrative world of Microman, the characters are called Micros, and they hail from a planet called Micro-Earth. While on our planet, the Micros disguise themselves as our action figures. So again, this isn't a toy of a Micro, this is the Micro, scaled one-to-one, -one, living, breathing, and alive, undercover, pretending to be a toy, like a twisted version of Toy Story. As a matter of fact, oftentimes Micros will disguise themselves as other toys, like Batman, the Predator. Why, one of your toys might be a Micro, and you may not even know it. Micros. Micros. Micros all around me! Takara also held the license for Godzilla merchandise, so it's of little surprise that in 2004, they released sets where the Micros can disguise themselves as Godzilla toys. This was also the year of Godzilla's 50th anniversary, so, so it was a good opportunity to cover several different goji suits. So if you've ever been poking around eBay and you've seen sets like these, that's what they are. But are they any good? Well, only one way to find out. First, we're gonna look at this set here, and it looks like four action figures, but it's really only two. You get the two micros and a costume for each of them to hide in, Megalon and Jet Jaguar. The Megalon and Jet costumes will not work as figures on their own without the micros inside of them. Packaging is nice, and on the back here, we can see that there are three other Godzilla sets, which I will show you in just a moment. Again, these small figures are packed with articulation, 30 points to be exact, and they even come with swappable hands. Real quick, we also have a micro who comes with an original 1954 Gojira, and I do like that they include the posters on the back of the cards, by the way. Here's another double set with two micros, and this time they're hiding inside a 1964 Godzilla and King Ghidorah. These look pretty decent. I like that instead of looking like Godzilla, this looks like the costume of Godzilla. Although it does feel less like the micros are disguising themselves as toys, and more like they're just putting on the movie costumes. By the way, there's a Final Wars Godzilla, and we're gonna circle back to him toward the end of this video. And last, I should also mention that Gamera got the Microman treatment as well. I'm not going to explore these guys on today's video, but rather I just wanted to show you that there's a Showa Gamera, Heisei Gamera, and a Toto from Gamera the Brave. So let's dig in, because I want to play with some aliens disguised as Godzilla toys. Alright, so we got some stands for the Micros. Here are the alternate hands, which is interesting because these sets don't come with anything for the Micros to hold. And what's this here? Ugh, I hate stickers. Little catalog here of these Kigoro Microman sets. And of course the instructions. Now remember, the goal here is to put the micro figure inside the Godzilla-related costumes. The micros themselves are neat, plenty of articulation as promised, and I'm a sucker for chrome and translucent toys. I only stuck the chest stickers on these guys because I despise putting tiny stickers on things. But yeah, on their own, the micros are very easy to pose. They're decent action figures. Psh, 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 I kick your face. But let's turn this guy into Jet Jaguar. 
Man, it's so weird seeing Jet's head and abdomen detached like this, right? So first I have to pop off the micro's head, his arms, his feet, put on Jet's crotch like a pair of shorts. And I would absolutely wear a pair of shorts that look like this, by the way. Got the top on, and the, the important thing is you really want to make sure that the ball joints are accessible. You stick on his 80s leg warmers here. Nothing here is just slipping on. This, this takes some force. You see, I can't put his feet back on because his leg warmers aren't high enough. You really have to press this down to make it work. Got his arms on. Then we stick his hands back in. And then last, the Jet Jaguar head pops on top, and there, a Jet Jaguar action figure. Well, sorta. The downside is unlike the Microman underneath him, Jet barely has any articulation at all. Moreover, to make this figure work, we had to remove Microman's feet, hands, and head. So how does that work in the narrative of these toys, exactly? Microman wants to disguise himself as a toy so he pops his own head off? What the hell does a head do while he's riding in jet? It makes no sense. I could swap the head so it looks like this guy's wearing a bodysuit. Eh, I don't know. Let's do Megalon. Same as jet, we pop off some parts. Bottom goes on, followed by the top here. Wow, this one's actually a little harder. You really gotta twist and squeeze. Bloody hell. Megalon's arms are also a bit more challenging because of the shoulders here the ball joint is a bit harder to reach. As a matter of fact, I had a bit of a hard time with this one. But eventually, Megalon was ready. The wings popped right on, and BAM! Megalon figure! And now I have all these spare parts! But enough of these two. Megalon, Jet Jaguar, psh, one and done characters. Let's get to the big G. Godzilla's assembly is very different. Microman's head can stay on this time, so that's nice. But he goes into Godzilla in a bit of an awkward crouching position. Hmm, let's see. Again, I do love the rubber suit. It would almost be more fun to put a toy of Haruo and Nakajima in here. Head banging goji! Dun, 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 dun. I like the color scheme of the micro that came in this set. That's pretty cool. We gotta stick him into this little purse opening in Godzilla's back. And it's quite a challenge to get the whole micro in there, let alone position him right. You want to make sure his ball joints come out of the four limbs. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. This is a pain. Ah, oh, man, his arm popped off! See, I got the whole micro in there, but without the ball joints, his head and feet just don't stick. This is the hardest one yet. Look inside there, my micro is falling apart inside Godzilla. So after turning off the camera and struggling for quite a while, I got the micro positioned right. As you can see, the payoff is a few little tears here by the dorsal plates. I wasn't being overly forceful or rough, but I did have to stretch the rubber to position the micro correctly. Then the last thing we need to do is put the dorsal plates on, and then we're done. Godzilla can now join the others. It's too bad there's no Gigan. Honestly, I would rather just buy a toy that looks like this from the get-go. After all that hassle, I'm confident that I'm never going to remove the Microman from this Godzilla again. The worst part is I gotta do it all over, cause here's another Godzilla. And I'm nervous to think about how complicated King Ghidorah is gonna be. We have his wings and some kind of wiring here. Then the usual Microman stickers and such. Again, I'm only sticking them on their chests. These guys are okay. Alright, break it up you two. So again, the micros get to keep their heads. Even better, looks like he gets to stand up straight and I don't have to feed his arms through anything. Instead, we gotta put this antenna looking contraption on his back first. Then you stick him into King Ghidorah's bottom half. We should end here because how can this toy look any cooler? Last, we wanna feed the antennae through the three necks and hmm, that should probably close. Again, I'm using a lot of force here. You need to make sure that these little nubs clear the opening of the necks. With some more pushing and twisting, eventually the body was complete. On to the tail and oh my god! I gotta squeeze this huge nub here into this freaking pinhole! I spent a long time on this and got nowhere. With all my might and force, I could not get the tail to attach. Around here, it occurred to me to soften the skin with a hairdryer. This might have helped for the other toys, too. 
This was incredibly helpful for the tail and wings, although they still weren't easy. I actually had to pop the top half of King Ghidorah's body off again, just so I can get a good grip to apply the force needed to put the wings on. Thankfully, the three Ghidorah heads are very simple. Again, great looking Showa King Ghidorah. And I like how he scales next to the Godzilla too. And again, I'd rather just have this as a toy without all the Microman stuff. Okay, no sense in avoiding it. We gotta do this other Godzilla and my butt cheeks are already clenching with aggravation. Did the hairdryer help with Godzilla? Yes, in that the small opening in his back can be stretched easier. But even with the wider opening, positioning Microman without his parts popping off is still an incredible challenge. It took a lot of time off camera, but Godzilla is complete. That's the real downside if you wanted to actually play with these Microman toys. The transformations would totally break up your momentum. You'd be playing, then you'd have to stop for maybe 10 minutes or more, five if you have a hairdryer, and by the time you're done, you're kind of not in the mood to play anymore. But here's the lineup. Do they look neat? Yeah, they're pretty cool. Will I ever, 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 ever transform them again? No, heavens no. As a matter of fact, I'm a little nervous to handle them now out of the fear that someone's limb will pop off beneath the suit. Now this will vary from collector to collector, but personally, I think these toys are better for display than for play. And that's why I chose to hang up the three Gammeras along with the Final Wars Godzilla on my wall over here. And by the way, because these are Japanese imports and because we can't have nice things, you'll often see these toys on eBay dramatically overpriced. I'm talking $100, $200, I've seen $300 for one pack. It was actually cheaper for me to just import my toys directly from Japan. I got this Final Wars Godzilla Microman for 20 bucks at G-Fest. My advice as of the making of this video is to avoid paying over $50 for one of these as much as possible. They are just not worth the high price tag. So that's the story of the Godzilla Microman crossover. I'll see you guys next playtime.